Tonight on Civic Education, we take a closer look at the implications of money politics in Nigeria ahead of the 2023 elections. And we discuss the failure of presidential amnesty in the Niger Delta and issues of unrest in the region. This is Plus Politics. I am Mary Anna Cole. With the overwhelming influence of money on the Nigerian politics, the chairman of the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, Professor Mahmoud Yakupu, had earlier expressed the fear that the current democracy that we enjoy may soon become a plutocracy, that is, a government of the rich, for the rich, by the rich. Nigeria appears to be on another critical juncture, preparing to ascend another transition of power, a hurdle that requires more rigorous and preparedness. But like every other election season, the stakes are high, tensions abound, and uncertainty is also in abundance. If this is, uh, if it is this uncertainty that has now given rise to the concerns and worries whether the 2023 presidential elections will be con conducted smoothly. Well, joining us to discuss this is Emmanuel Moran. He's a legal practitioner. And Shegun Shopita is the chairman of Act Network and is also a public affairs analyst. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for joining us. Pleasure to be here. Thank you for having us. Great. Let, let me let me start with you, um, Shegun, because you work with civil service, civil society organizations, and some of the things that you are engaged in is trying to make sure uh, that Nigerians understand what the modus operandi is when it comes to the electoral process, as opposed to what we see and know. Um, how easy is it to reconfigure the mind of the average Nigerian who's already programmed to take money? Uh, as some form of inducement to cast their vote. Okay, um, it, it's 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 a big ask. It's it's going to be very very difficult. Um, um, it's not impossible, and I think that we will get there um, with time. So when I say time, that could be ten years from now, or you know maybe even twenty. Um, but at the moment, uh, the things, the factors that drive this behavioral pattern, especially on the part of the electorate, is they're very simple. They are existential issues, um, survival issues. The fact that poverty prevalence is so high, over 60 percent, I think, uh, on the average across the country. Um, um, illiteracy level is a major contributing factor as well, and that's also pretty high. Um, the level of education, when you talk of illiteracy, it's one thing, then education, like um, uh, having educated minds uh, um, uh, as being a predominant portion of the electorate is also a key factor, and that's not the case. So it's difficult to, uh, to run campaigns that show to the electorate the implication of taking inducements, whether monetary or others, like, you know, the bag of rice, the bag of beans, uh, the, the phone, the, the scratch cards, and all of those things. It's difficult to, um, to, to make a connection in the minds of these guys between those things they collect and the fact that they don't have good governance and the fact that they don't have basic facilities, services, infrastructure that they require to live good lives. They just simply can't make the connection because they're too poor to, to, to think that far. All they can think of is today. So it's going to be difficult to change that. So until um, the economy improves, until poverty is, um, you can never eradicate poverty in any society, not even in the advanced societies. So poverty remains. But until poverty is reduced to the, po to the point where a predominant number of people are not living from hand to mouth, it will be a tough job. So the real work must start from demanding good governance so that um, the quality of the lives of people can improve. Then you can start having these types of conversations. But until mm. then, you know, we, just, we can only do our best. Hmm. Um, Barcel Morin, let's look at the cost of, uh, you know, assessing or having access to a political office in Nigeria. And, and, and then we're looking at political parties, whether it be the major ones or even the minor ones. We've even seen um, smaller political parties like the ADC having issues of, uh, you know, 
unnecessary amount of money is changing hands. And, and one would have not expected that from smaller parties. But again, for a person who says, I want to lead my people, I want to run for this office, um, the peg, the, the amount that is you know, put on the different tickets or even um, intent forms, is that not even a basis for this conversation? Uh, there is. That is a basis. And um, INET uh, is playing uh, a, a game that uh, now is crying now when it should have started crying when the political parties are putting so much money as condition for, 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 for um, uh, getting a, a ticket of a party. How do you explain to a Nigerian who does not have... Look at today, in Kaduna, in Kaduna they said they were sending back Almajaris and they were giving them 5,000 5, naira each to go and resettle in their states. Now, that same person you are sending, you are giving 5,000 naira to go and resettle, he will hear that somebody paid 100 million naira for one form to contest election. Where in this world do you hear that? And when INE should have come out then to have put its foot down to say, look, this is against the provisions of the Electoral Act and against the, 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 uh, the, 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 the world view of elections. That could have, made, if INEC had come out boldly and strongly against that, it would have taken to uh, the politicians that look, there is a, there's a new uh, uh, kid in the block. That's one. Two, the security agencies that are supposed to be dealing with this matter, they are also complicit. How in God's name would, can somebody hold 20, 30 billion under his, under his house? Or, under, or don't go and dig a hole and put it somewhere. And you want to tell me that the security agencies do not know? How do these monies move? Do they fly? Bullion vans move them. Policemen are in those bullion vans. Don't they have a reporting system? Don't, is there any, any big man in Nigeria that doesn't have DSS working with him? What are the reporting from those people? There must be a system. A purpose. You see, unfortunately, the way we run our country, we are running our country as if it's a market in another man's land. You go and buy and you go. If anything happens in that place, it's their business. That's where the politicians are behaving. Or else how do you explain this? That you have a, a people, that you have this kind of hunger. The, 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 the currency of the country is, get, is getting hammered left, right, and center. And nobody is discussing this. You are talking about how much money you have stocked, you are, you are stocked somewhere. You want to buy, you are buying bags of rice, you are buying uh, um, food stuff, you are buying uh, uh, marijuana for, for somebody who, are, who, you, who you have not thought how to, how, to, how, to, how to fish. You are buying fish for the person. You are, we are destroying the, the fabric of our society, the way we are going. And there's too much money in the system. I know some people who are, who are uh, political leaders. They stack so much money that on election day, they're going to go to their village yes, and give 5,000, 10,000, depending on the people. There are some people who are political leaders who will, be, who will get up to 5 million to be able to bring people out to vote for them. If we continue like this, this country is going to crash on our heads. Hmm. We've said it several times. We've warned, we've cried, we've said on all, 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 all media, if we continue like this, this country is going to crash on our heads. Uh. And unfortunately, the executive and the, uh, the politicians feel they have uh, uh, um, uh, passports of other countries where they can run to. And But one thing is this. I have not seen any politician that has agreed to be buried outside Nigeria. They want to come back home to, bury, to, to be buried. Okay. And this is the only country where they can get the kind of attention they are getting. Okay. They should focus more on 
Nigeria. How many of them, like I said the last time I was in your studio, in, in 1999, how many of these politicians could afford to fly business class outside this country? Mm. That were work, how, many, how many of them add up to 1 million naira in their bank accounts? What, what job have they done? What business have they done from 1999 till date that is making them fly in private jets? Okay. What is the taxman doing about these people? What is INEC doing? What is DSS doing? What is uh, 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 ESCC doing? What is ICPC doing? I guess these are questions that, that are begging, begging answers. But I'll, I'll come back to you because we need to talk about the how to and, and where to start from. But back to you, Shekun. Um, as former Senate President uh, Adolfus Nwabara at one point uh, in time once alluded to the fact that um, politics in Nigeria is more uh, like a business. Uh, and I'm wondering, why do you think that he made this assertion? And if you do agree, why has politics somewhat become a business of sorts that every single person is fighting tooth and nail to get it? Well, um, the answer to that is pretty simple, actually. Um, it's the fact that, so when we talk about restructuring um, and that entire conversation around how our governance works in Nigeria, one of the fundamental things that we need to seek to achieve is to reduce the, the access to state resources that political office holders, holders have. Um, because that is um, it's a difficult to resist um, incentive for political actors um, to, to seek power. You know, you know that once you become a governor, the, 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 the dividing line between you as a person and your state, uh, the, the state you govern, for, as, for example, is very thin, if it exists at all. You know, so um, as long as that is the situation, then, you know, it will always be um, a bit of a, a business for these guys. And, of course, the other answer to that question is, so there's, there's that incentive, there's that sweet, irresistible um, 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 allure of the world of winning an election. And then there's the fact that in order to even contest and win that election, you're going to have to invest. <laughs> you know, you're going to spend, depending on which office you're running for. So if you're running for president, you can't spend less than probably about 50 billion naira. 50 billion. And that's if we're being very conservative. You probably will spend much more than that if you look at all of the uh, the things that need to happen. Uh, so, so, so the 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 electoral act capping campaign spending at five billion is a problem because it's 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 denying the reality on ground. When you make a law that does not reflect reality, you make it inevitable for people to flout that law, and therefore you make it very difficult for it to be enforced. And if we are unable to enforce those provisions and those restrictions, then, you know, how do we move forward? Until you have consequence management properly um, uh, done in a society, people will behave in whichever way they are able to get away with. So the starting point for me is that the laws need to be reviewed to reflect the reality. Five billion as a cap for campaign funding for president is a joke. Um, uh, each presidential candidate is going to spend not less than that five billion just to pay party agents, just to pay party agents on election day. That five billion is gone, you know, because you know you've got you've got uh, 176,000 polling units um, across the country, and let's assume that you know for a for a party that that is serious, you have nothing less than two agents representing you at each 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 polling unit. You cannot pay anything less than ten thousand naira. For each of those polling, uh, for, for, for each of those agents in each polling unit. Okay. So if you just do the numbers, you are talking of three point something billion. If you have two polling, um, um, and how are we supposed to determine? Uh, how are these people supposed to serve us? How are these people not supposed to be less corrupt if they're having to spend all of these monies? And just like Barrister Emmanuel said, where did they get these monies from? And 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 before yeah. before now, who were they? I mean, we're not even asking all those questions, are we? Exactly. So, so, so one of the things that the law has tried to do, for example, and I'm sure uh, the barrister will, uh, uh, you know, corroborate that is there is a there is a cap on donations. For example, you know, maximum amount that one single person can donate. 
and the capital 50 million naira. So that is, is supposed to be a way of ensuring that those funds don't come from a few people that you know you crowdsource the funds. But unfortunately, uh, we all know that that's not what happens. So what, what we need to do as a society is to find a way to ensure that money bags don't run our politics, is to ensure that um, Jagaban Ashwaju Bola Metinubu is not going to fund his campaigns by himself. Unfortunately, we know that that is what is going to happen. Atiku Abubakar of the other party of the PDP is going to fund, you know, most of the, the all the adverts that we see on TV now from those two political parties is likely coming from those two major major candidates. Um, in the in, in the Labour Party, um, I think that there is a bit more of um, uh, crowdfunding going on. But you know, the more you have pressure on these candidates to provide the predominance of the money that is required, the more you are giving them um, a right, almost like a moral right, to steal our money because they must get that money back. So when that legislator said that, that's what he's talking about. As long as they invest, of course they're going to they're going to have to recoup the investment, and the return on the investment mm -hmm. must be good. You know, so so we need to look at that entire uh, funding structure and be very deliberate about um, um, writing the legislation and the rules to ensure that one person cannot run away with the game. That's the way it works in other societies. Hmm. If we don't get there, then you know we're just we're just playing. Talking about enforcement, because it's one thing to have this in print and say this is what the law says, as opposed to making sure that it's enforced. Um, I know that in 2015, um, Serap had sued all of these political parties who did not make um, their party financing open. The books have still not been open till today. It's 2015 and today, we're well, in 2022, Serap is still in court asking political parties to make open their finances, their party finances, because of this cap issue. Now we have amended the Electoral Act and it's, it's in force, but that has still not been done. So I'm really curious. What, because something has to give. If there is no enforcement, then what we're doing is just, you know, jaw-jawing for nothing, right? Yeah, so, so, so we have to go to court. I, I think the, 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 the invariably and inevitably, enforcement has to be compelled. Um, again, the barista can advise us. There is something they call the, an order of mandamus. <laughs> I'm not a lawyer, so please, barista, pardon me. Um, you know, so that you, you, we can go to court and get the courts to give orders that compel agencies of government to exercise the powers that they have been given by the law where they are seen to be reluctant to do so. So Nigerians must put pressure on all of these agencies, the EFCC, the ICPC, INEC themselves, uh, the Nigeria police, and any other regulatory agency involved in, in the entire enforcement um, um, process to ensure that they do what they need to do to prevent this. And, you know, when these things are happening, we can all see it. We cannot, it happens right, you know, it's brazen. Um, the politicians know that there won't be consequences, so they don't really try too hard to right. hide this thing. So, you know, we need to look for ways of getting evidence, the evidence into the hands of the people that need the evidence so that they can then, you know, we can push them and get them to try to get um, legal um, um, uh, consequences, you know, slapped slammed on these guys that are doing all these things. Until we do that, uh, we will always continue to have this conversation. So that's, for me, Miriam, that's that's the only way out. We've got to compel action. Okay. Know, because they will not be by themselves. The people that are involved are, are benefiting from, 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 from all of this, so they won't do anything about it. So we are the ones that are suffering, and we're the ones that, are, that have to push uh, for the solution. Uh, by some more, and, um just picking it up from where um, Mr. Chopiton stopped, uh, he's saying that there, there's, a, the, the, you know, there's a lot that we can do with the law. But just as I, say, as I said earlier on, Serap has been on this matter. Political parties have continued to spend and will not in any way um, let us know what the funding cap is or what, how much they've expended during an, a, you know, an election season. Now, um, he's talking about us, the people, playing a role in making sure that, you know, one way or the other, these political parties can have an open-door policy so the public can know if they are keeping to the rules and regulations. But INEC also has its job cut out for it. Um, but then we have security agencies that bark and don't necessarily bite, except there is some form of agenda. 
Um, so where do we come in here and how? What is the how-to? How do we make sure that the right thing is done by us? Because, you know, at the end of the day, we're the ones who are in need of this service. And if the service providers are seem seemingly corrupt, then the service that we're going to get, uh, is going, we're going to be, it's going to be underhand or some, something worse. Yeah, um, I, I, I agree absolutely with uh, my, my co-guest. And um, I, uh, the fact of it is this. We have a system where people are appointed to offices and they don't do what they are, they are appointed to do. Now, another very important, apart from ESCC, ICPC, another very important man in this whole game is the tax man. The tax man can make demands upon you, upon the political party, upon individual donors, upon the candidates to show their source of, of, of wealth. How much, how did you make this money? Show us the, the, the flow of your tax. And the way we run things, they run things in this country, everything is hidden. And we must take away something. The president that appoints and the Senate that screams. Unfortunately, they are all in put in arms. They are all together, they, they, they all want to rig the system. Or else, how do you go and screen somebody and tell somebody to take a bow, somebody that is coming to be the head of tax or the head of ESCC or the IG Inspector General of Police or the head of uh, uh, head of ESCC to tell them Take about you do not you have uh, screening for about two hours three hours. What do you do? Ask them about two weeks to take them through all the issues. You need to you need to open them up to check if these people are qualified to ask you to to strip you naked because these are the people that can look at you naked and look at your, your finances naked. They must not have like they say scissors wife should not. Uh, 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 should, should also be seen to be very to be clean. You get so these are the things that they, they should do. But unfortunately, we do not. The INEC the INEC chairman that comes, it is it, most times the INEC chairman acts based on his own convictions alone, not what the people who have put him in that office are going to show him that look, this job you are coming to do, if you you owe us, you owe the country a duty. And as long as we continue like this, we cannot get any anywhere. I today on, on Twitter, a young man, a Nigerian, a young Nigerian who has who who has registered and and has done everything possible to have his voter's card. He said today he, he spent his last two thousand naira trying to go and get his voter's card, and his name is not on the list. But you are finding underage people in certain areas. You yeah, are having double registrations in certain areas. How is how is that how is that happening? I I did I, I changed my I I went to apply to change my location, and for a new card for since last year till today I've done, I've gone there about five times. They tell me it is not ready, and they say by the end of November you can't get cards anymore. So what is happening? Tomorrow you go and see tons of these cards in somebody's bag in in a cap somewhere or somewhere. How are this happening? Is there no tracking system? It's terrible. There is problem. Let, we let, are seeing them every day. This, this, that is why it is difficult for, or for, for INEC or anybody to track the monies that are going to go into politics. How do you check? How do you stop drug money? Look at the number of drug uh, barrels that have been caught. How do you stop drug money from going into politics? Hmm. How, do you, how, do you, how do you stop uh, money stolen from government from going into politics? These are the things that we should be, we should, and I'm very grateful for you, to you people for bringing up on this. There should be more discussions around this. Hmm. So that we can push the agencies that are supposed to do, do their job to do their job. They're not doing it. Okay. And unfortunately, to another thing, unfortunately, in this country, is that when somebody is appointed to an office, he becomes that office. He wants to make money. If he, if he leaves that office, he wants to become a billionaire. Okay. Look yeah. around you. People who have held offices, how many of them have gone back to re become regular men? Regular people, they are not. 
Let me, let me bring your attention to something that the president said recently. Um, before the kickoff of this election, the president, um, during a meeting with governors uh, on the platform of the APC, uh, had said that government will ensure that Nigerians did not get intimidated or humiliated by those in position or the more privileged in the 2023 elections. Let me ask, how well do you think the president has lived up to that promise that he made? Don't forget that in the course of campaigns, and we've seen a lot of, you know, um, attacks happen. Um, we've seen a, a sitting senator um, almost killed. Uh, it's happening literally everywhere. Um, do, do, we, is, is, do we see the, gov the president or the government in general's word being backed by any form of action as opposed to you know, the nice words that we hear and, and, and then nothing really happens. Because again, this also would tell us what will happen or what we expect to see come 2023. Yeah, I think uh, it's a lot of rhetoric. This is the same president that told us that he, does, he would not fly private, that he's going to give out all the private to, to run a, 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 a new airline. Till date, this is the seventh year. This is the same president that is that said, it, uh, because of um, uh, the, the, the of, of people flying out of the country to go and get medical uh, treatment, is killing the country. But what is it doing? This is a president that came back and had over 30 vehicles leading him from the airport back to Asoro, when he came back from the longest uh, 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 treatment he, 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 he took in England. How? How do you how do you see the, how does he see, see these things he's doing to our, to our country? When he does not believe in the medical system, he does not believe in, in, in what he has said before. He's not living by them. He told us clearly in 2014 that the, the, the jets in the that it, it's unnecessary luxury. Hmm. But till date, they, they have added more to the fleet. How does he how does he explain? When I the 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 the, 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 the base of our of our governance, as rock, you you still spend so much money buying diesel. How does he explain it? Hmm. How does he explain the amount of money that is spent in as rock clinic that nobody attends? How does he explain all these things? Is, is it, does he realize that he's talking to people who are so privileged? Hmm. These same people that are in his party that paid 100 million naira to buy one form. And he was sitting there. This is a man that said, when, I will recollect in 2014 when they were showing him his house in Daura, in, uh, when, when, when the people went to visit him. He was still using the Betamax, the old Betamax uh, uh, video player in his house. That was why a lot of us said he was the right man. But today what has happened? He's just living in luxury. So okay. he must do this. He must, he must follow up on his talk. He can't be just talking to us like that. Oh, I think, oh, look, I will do this, I will do this, I will do that. How, there's, no, there's no chance at all. There's okay. no evidence at all that he's interested in doing any of these things. Okay. Fin fin finally, Shagun, um, where do we go from here? Because I, I'm beginning to feel that every election cycle we have these conversations. So it looks like we're doing something. Um, as much as you and I have had this conversation on other forums and you said, look, this has to be a continuum. These conversations cannot be stopped. But then if we just keep talking and then there's no action that follows it or in that direction. And again, should we be waiting for government and its agencies, like I asked the barrister, to do something if we don't necessarily keep them on their toes or maybe even hold their feet to the fire? Well, you know, so... so as hopeless as the situation might appear, and um, you know, like we were saying yesterday, um, we don't have a choice, we can't give up, so we've got to keep fighting, we've got to keep talking about these things. We have to keep the conversation on the front burner so that the people that can do something will eventually do something someday. Um, but, but I think um, one of the things I would like to quickly point out is, in fact, I would like to commend you know, the Central Bank of Nigeria because um, the policy to this Naira redesign policy might very well be, um, to use that cliche, a game changer. Uh, you know, you know. So what happens generally, and, and, and I think we all know this is, 
it's a four-year cycle, and the politicians know this. So what, what tends to happen is that as soon as one election cycle is over, um, they're already planning for the next one. So they start accumulating cash because it is the cash that they're going to use on election day to settle um, the voters to buy the votes. Um, you know, so um, this move by the central bank could be a master stroke if they stand their ground. You know, so I know that there's a lot of pressure, you know, because, for example, of the impact on the exchange rate, that people are saying, no, this is badly timed and all of that, but we have to think about the long term. This short term pain, I think, is something we should bear, it's something we should even support. You know, like, look, you know what, this cost will bear it. Let, because the impact of this policy on the elections next year might yet surprise a lot of us. The cash that people are stashing away will be useless to them. You know, so they have to go through the, whether they are taking the money back into the bank, and then, of course, because of the restrictions, the limits on the amount of money you can withdraw per day, they can't get those monies back in cash in time for the elections. If they mm. decide to convert to dollars, they also can't get the money back converted into Naira in time for the elections. Mm. You know, so either way, this is a good move. It should be encouraged, to be supported, and I think that the government needs to All do right. more um, very you know, fundamental and system systemic um, measures like this to, to, to combat this thing. I suspect that the CBN has done this deliberately and specifically because of these elections, and then they must be commended for it. Well, we look forward uh, to the development as they come. Thank you so much. Shegun Shopitan is the chairman Acts Network. He's also a public affairs analyst, and Emmanuel Omoran is a legal practitioner. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for being part of the conversation. Thank you. Have a Thank you day. so much. All Thank right. You. Thank you all for staying with us. We'll take a quick break. When we return, we'll be discussing the failed management of the presidential amnesty program in the Niger Delta region. Stay with us. <laughs>